This is Howard from BigHBrickland.com and we're going to teach you how to rebuild your Kelsey Hayes calipers. We're going to take it from this to this. And what do we need to make the Brickland brake caliper stop like a modern car? We start off with caliper kits, one for each side. You got a dust boot and a high pressure seal for each caliper. This is one kit per car. It has all the caliper mounting bushings and the anti-rattle clips. And I always replace the bleeder screws. Always. Don't mess with the old ones. And we, if you need them, we have pistons, very high quality. Uh, and if you have gouged pins or rusty rotten pins, you can replace them with brand new mounting pins. Here are the sacrificial anti-rattle clips. And last but not least, the correct brake pad for your Brickland. It has the proper friction coefficient. That means your car will stop like a modern car. What brake fluid do we use? Synthetic. DOT3, do not use DOT4. It will damage the system. Uh, you can use any brand you want. Just make sure it says synthetic. You can obtain lubricant uh, if you can find it. It's getting scarcer because uh, most people don't rebuild calipers anymore, but you cannot get calipers for a Brickland over the counter. You have to rebuild them. One thing you'll have to take note of the different components. Uh, this is an anti-rattle spring and it does go around the pin on the inside and it tucks in behind the brake pad. Over here we have what I call a sacrificial anti-rattle clip. Uh, when you put new brake pads on you have to, have to bend them back out. Uh, they, they are not spring-loaded. Uh, they move in and stay in. Uh, this is the proper uh, location for them on the caliper. And here's the bleeder screw. And you will have to take the brake line loose on the back side. Boy, sometimes they're tight. You want to make sure you just loosen it. That's it. Second thing is to remove the mounting pin bolt assembly. When you take these off, these are right and left, and they're marked up on one side of them. At this point, the caliper will come loose. And since we loosened this flexible brake line, all you have to do is rotate it to get it off the hose. It's very simple. There is a copper gasket right here, a little washer gasket. Uh, don't lose that. Some people are wondering, why do you rebuild the calipers? Well, the old brake fluid destroys everything metal in the brake system, and it had to be flushed out on a yearly basis. We have better brake fluid now, you don't have to do that as often, but the damage is already done. And we're going to show you what's going on. So hopefully you, these have been drained, well this one hasn't. So I would suggest getting a drain pan to go underneath it before you do anything. Nasty brake caliper. And we're going to knock the cobwebs out of this one too. So, first thing you should have done is loosen up the bleeder screw right here. And sometimes these break off, sometimes they're seized. If you want to make sure that it's not broke off, you're going to need a ball peen hammer about this size. And I would suggest holding the hammer way down here, give it a tap, and then whack it. And maybe two. Won't hurt it because we're going to replace it. Now we're going to loosen the bleeder screw. Do not do it with a wrench. This is a 12 point. We need to go get a 6 point. So we're going to take a trip over to the toolbox. And I'm going to get a nice little 6 point 3 8 socket. And I highly recommend the long ratchet because you never know how tight these are going to be. So here we go. Watch my hands. Give it a hit. There we go. It's loose. Now, fluid's going to start draining out everywhere. If I can get it loose. Now we'll use the wrench to finish loosening it. Yep, 
Yep, there we are. Hope you're wearing uh, dirty clothes. All right, we're gonna toss this. This is why we don't mess with the bleeder screws. Put a new one in. So, now we have to get the piston out. How do we get the piston out? Uh, you first have to put the bleeder screw back in. Yes, back in. You can just tighten it finger tight, no problem. Then we get the uh, air nozzle with the rubber tip. And I have to give you a word of caution. If you put your hand in here, it's going to hurt. And you'll probably have to call 911. This is serious stuff. Don't hurt your fingers. Use caution during piston removal. So what do we do? We get a brake pad. Let's put the brake pad in properly. That brake pad will cushion the blow of the piston coming out. And you might even want to turn down the air pressure a little bit. You can leave these hooked up on the car and pump the brake pedal to actually use hydraulic fluid from the brake system to push the piston out if you have no access to air. So we're going to bump this trigger, push it in firmly. Watch my finger here. Just give it a little bump. So. And let it come out on its own if you can. It's going to make a pop. There we go. That's it. Now if that piston was a good piston, this brake pad will keep it from being damaged. So next step, pull the piston out. And we're going to inspect it. This little brake pad we're going to toss and get a rag out and wipe this off. So I'm already seeing some damage here. If it isn't smooth, that piston's a goner. This would ruin a new seal. We have to replace this piston. Now the next step, so we can get rid of the pan. We're going to pull the dust boot out. You just push in and pull out. Simple as that. Then we take the high pressure seal out with the dull screwdriver. Just give it a pull and out she comes. <clears throat> Next step, get the needle nose pliers right here. And we'll proceed to pull out the uh, mounting grommets. You stick the needle nose in and twist. Very easy. Next one, needle nose in and twist. And we do the big ones, needle those in, just pull it. You can twist if you want, that's optional, but pull it right out. Now we take the bleeder screw back out. Okay, now we're ready to sandblast, but we have to do one thing before that. You got to get this thing dry. So we're going to have to wash it off with soap and water, dry it off, and... Uh, uh, Put a piston in it so we do not sandblast any of the bore if you mess up this bore then you could cause a leak behind the high pressure seal okay next step take a small drill that'll fit in that u-shaped uh, part of the casting and pick a wire wheel that's just slightly larger than the hole we're gonna you're gonna pour a little bit of brake fluid in here to uh, lubricate it then we're going to stick the drill in here. Move it up and down. Get that groove at the top clean and pop it right out. Now we're going to wipe it out. Okay, now we're ready to go wash it off with soap and water. And just clean this puppy out a little bit. We media blasted it and painted it with cast iron colored paint because these were bare cast iron from the factory. Looks great. If your pistons are good and can be reused, you do want to clean and polish them. You can take some solvent 
and a rag or microfiber and clean everything out of the groove where the dust seal goes. There's usually junk up on top that'll come off and wipe it down. Then you can take some metal polish, which is what I prefer, but if you don't have that, you can use uh, a paint polish. And I'm gonna just do the paint polish here. Gotta get it to come out. There we go, just a little bit. And you can rub it around, get everything all polished up. Don't be afraid to push on it. And it takes very little effort. Let it dry and buff it. And you've got a beautiful looking piston that can be reused. Now, first step, we're gonna take this seal, put a little lubrication on it. Always wear gloves. Blue is optional. And we're gonna put this in the second ridge right here. This is where the dust seal goes. This is where the high pressure seal goes. Take both fingers, hold it down in one spot, just work it around. Tease it in there a little bit. It's gonna drop down. Just push it up, it'll pop right in place. Now, take your finger and rub it around. Then we're also gonna squirt a little lubricant in the bottom. You wanna rub all that around because we need some initial lubricant for the piston. And then we take the dust seal. And we're gonna put some of the lubricants on our fingers goes on the inside of the dust seal. If it goes on the outside, it's going to attract dirt. If anything does make it past the seal, it will be attracted to the lubricant. But we also need lubricant in the little groove here. This groove right here goes into this groove right there. So we're gonna start at the back. You can reach your finger through the hole. We're gonna push it, <laughs> a little slippery here. We're gonna push it in. Hope everybody can see that. And just keep pushing it all around as we go. And then when we get to this part right here, we're gonna just kind of push that in a little bit. You can use a very dull screwdriver or your fingers. Just keep pushing it in. It's gonna to wanna to pop out until you push it into that groove. You wanna work it in all the way around. And do it twice. I'm gonna push it into, I've got my finger here and I'm gonna push it in all the way around and around. And that one's in there good. You wanna test it, just pull it up. Now the next step, we want to lubricate the piston. Especially down here, because that camfered edge is what goes past our high pressure seal. Now the only thing we have to do with the boot is make sure we get it over the piston. I'm going to make this look easy, even though technically this is easy compared to other calipers. But you have to pay close attention to what I'm doing with my thumbs. I pull one edge of that lip up and then I take my thumbs without letting go and I push all the way, whoop, that's a needle slip. Push all the way around to the back side and you'll hear it make a little poop noise and that means you're in. Oops, let's try that again. Lift this up, I'll put this here and go all the way around. Listen for that noise. There it is, we're in. It seems complicated the first time you do it, but it's one of the easiest calipers I've ever rebuilt. Now, we're not gonna, we're gonna grab this screwdriver, we're not gonna push down hard on it. We're just gonna use it as an easy way of rocking it back and forth until it gets past that seal. Just barely rock it back and forth. Make sure you're centered, and oh, it goes right down in. How about that? Notice the seal bubbled up a little bit, like it inflated. You can take your doll screwdriver and make a noise, and it will come, come back to normal. So that's all it takes to put the piston 
the seal and the boot in the caliper. All we have to do now is a little cleanup, get all the lubricant off the boot so we don't attract any dirt on this brake caliper. Make sure it's all clean, wipe your gloves off. And the next step is going to be the bleeder screw, which is right here. Should go in with your fingers. If it doesn't, uh, you're gonna have to clean the threads a little more with a little wire brush. At this point, this is a brand new bleeder screw and we have a taper on the end of it, right there. And the taper matches up with the taper inside the caliper. We have to mate these two together. So I'm gonna crank down on this a little bit. I mean, not too hard, but just, you wanna, you'll feel it seat all the way. It doesn't, it seems like it's a little soft at first and then it gets rock hard. That's where you stop. And loosen it up and then just snug it. That'll make it easier to bleed. Uh, these are the bushings that go in next. We're gonna push down on this. Here's where you get a doll screwdriver out again. Push down on this. Give it a little push with your finger. And voila, it snaps in place. You can hear the snap. So now we're gonna put the other bushing in. You just push down and give it a little push with our doll screwdriver. Don't poke a hole in it. Push it down. Oh, that one's not cooperating. There you go. You'll hear a little pop noise when it goes all the way through. Now we're going to do the uh, large bushing. These guys are a little different. I like to uh, fold them over like that and put them in. Look at that. That's easy. Here we go. Fold it over. Stick it in the hole. They just pop right in place. Okay, so basically we have a rebuilt caliper. When we reinstall the caliper, we have the anti-rattle clip and two pads. You're gonna install one pad in the caliper first on the outside of the caliper. And it makes it easy to put the caliper on the vehicle with this clip installed. Uh, you just hook it around on both sides. Make sure you see it go through the hole so that the pin will fit. Make sure the brake pad is lined up with the hole and the clip is lined up with the hole. This one looks pretty good. We're gonna set this on the car, but first, this pad gets dropped right into place right here. Now it's gonna sink down and we will have to pull it back up a little to get the pin to go in. Connect the caliper to the flexible brake hose. It's a little bit tricky doing it this way. You might have to get your knee in there and get the threads in the right place and you just start rolling it around. Rolling it around. Roll it around until it stops. There we go, we're stopped. Now we set this in place on the car, like so. And at this point, I've got the uh, sacrificial anti-rattle clips already pre-installed. Uh, I wanna put this through the bushing. Then remember, I have to lift the pad up. I can take the other pin and lift the pad into place. There we go. Just get the clip rotated properly. Now we got to get the other pin in. Get that in the right position. Wiggle the pin around. You got to make sure it's underneath the spring, into the shoe, in that shoe, and your clip has to be in the right place, the anti-rattle clip. And now we have to work this into the bushing. Sometimes the best way to do it is start rotating it. And it's going in. So now you don't want to do it all the way. You want to go to the next one down here. Make sure everything is in the right place. Your clip's in, this clip's in. And then tighten it by hand. Now 
Make sure it's tight enough not to come loose, but you don't want to over tighten it. You're probably looking at maybe 20 foot pounds. Since we uh, removed the or loosened up the uh, br flexible brake hose, we have to tighten that up. That gets put down pretty snug. You want to feel the washer crush a little bit and then stop. I hope this video helps make your Brickland restoration a lot easier.